Lower Kara is by far the worst Shadowlands dungeon in Season 4. And I don't just mean the hardest, I mean it's actually just terrible. The animations, mob design, and boss design is just completely unlike Modern WoW, which means you have to time machine back in the past to have a good understanding of what exactly everything does. Here is a route that I run as tank in all lower Kara keys that make it simpler, easier, and gives you the best chance of timing, and also gives you the best chance of carrying as the tank roll. I still think you should watch this if you're not a tank to communicate to your tank where to go, but it might be a little hard explaining this to a pug tank, so just have this video handy to link to them. And of course, make sure to subscribe to keep learning more very cool things. Before I begin the breakdown, just know that this dungeon will require two invis pots back to back. So once you pull the opera hall boss, you can combat potion there if it's a higher key, but your next two potions after that will be invisibility potions. Also, this guide just goes over the route. I'm not going to explain every boss and mob in detail, but I will explain just the dangerous stuff and the mechanics you absolutely need to know. We begin the dungeon very simply. Straight line pull to the opera hall. There's two ghosty boys that patrol this curved hallway, so make sure to kill them so that if anyone dies on the way to the opera hall, they can run back safely. The only important thing in this trash is the pennies cast. You have to stun or displace the mob, it cannot be just interrupted, and the swirlies will probably one shot. After a few minutes, you should be at the opera hall. Depending on which week it is, this could be the key breaker, although most of the bosses have been nerfed at this point. I'd say the hardest one currently is the West Side Story event, as there's just dozens of things to dodge in an already very crowded area. But regardless of which boss this is, you're going to use bloodlust or heroism here. Just remember, if it's the Wicked boss, go up in the purple when she casts Magic Magnificent and interrupt the adds. If it's West Side Story, kill the adds and boss and dodge the many things. And if it's the Beautiful Beast event, then make sure you don't kite the broom through the fire because it'll get angry and interrupt Heatwave from the rat guy or it'll cause a wipe. And in the second phase of Beautiful Beast, cleave down the forks, don't let too many be active at once and interrupt Dinnerbell or it'll also cause a wipe. Once this boss dies, I personally recommend pulling the next few packs out onto the stage, but that will sometimes bug out if you have a wide AoE class like a Moonkin, but thankfully Moonkins aren't good anyways, so odds are you won't have one, we were just doing it on hard mode. You're also pretty much straight line pulling this room, just make sure to get all the mobs that are in this first hallway, including the patrols, as well as the ones just around the corner, as the pull after that is the Dreadlord miniboss. The TLDR for the mechanics on that entire room is just stay away from their AoE swirlies. The tank has to kite them out of the light, and DPS can stand in the light to deal 50% more damage, just be careful. They also explode on death, so again, just move away. You can also stun or displace them to delay or stop their casts. After the Dreadlord boss, if you're not confident in your group, pull the next basement room one pack at a time and pull the first two packs up the stairs so no one body pulls. But if your group is confident, you can do this room in two pulls with two packs each or just one big massive pull if you're crazy. These are basically just the same mobs, except they will also try to cast a Firelands portal. This can be interrupted or stunned or displaced. If it goes off, it's either a wipe or maybe just half the group's HP on Tyrannical on a lower key. After this, you're invis potting, but you might have to wait for the usher that patrols here. If he's up against this arch when you get to it, wait until he turns around and then you're invising around this entire area through this doorway with the two ushers and turning right and ideally jumping down to Morose's dining room. If someone messed up the invis skip, you may have to pause here and mass res them, but there is a patrol that comes very close to this corner, so watch out for that. The dining room trash has always been incredibly easy in my groups, so you can break it up into four pulls, but I typically do it in two or three. The moral of the story on this entire room is just to dodge things on the ground and interrupt the fire spellcasters so the tank can group them up. Note that this blue circle that the elementals put around you will actually do damage to the mobs if you Venn diagram them in the pack. Just it obviously hurts players a lot too, so be careful. Also make sure you kill this waiter that patrols out of the cave, otherwise he'll surprise you during the boss fight and never goes well. Now this boss morose can be very scary, but it's actually pretty easy. Have two trusted people each pick up a ghost trap from the side of the room, then I always establish with the group that the guests around morose from left to right are one to four. And then when I say go, I have someone assigned to throw their ghost trap on number one. Then once that lands, someone else throws their trap on number two. Then I have anyone use crowd control on number three. Shackle undead works as well as hunter traps and monk paralysis. If you can't crowd control it or someone breaks number three when you pull it, that's okay. Ideally, you want to just pull number four with morose, then bloodlust. Burn it down quickly and do not focus Morose at all. After you kill number four, kill number three, or both of them together if you couldn't crowd control. And after they're both dead, hit number two to break the trap and pull it in. Have someone re-CC or re-trap number one while you kill number two. Then finally, once number two dies, pull number one and kill it. Again, focusing the guests, not Morose. Note that all of these guests will either have something to dodge or something to interrupt. And the ones with something to interrupt will usually require someone to carefully go up to where they were CC'd and interrupt them so that they can run to the tank. Or just have a range kick or just be an 
using overpowered blood decay and grip them in one by one. After all four guests are dead, just kill Morose. The healer has to dispel the tank occasionally as Morose takes their armor and also deal with the one minute hard slapping garrote bleeds that are going out on the group. You can Kyrian file, bop, or shadow meld these bleeds and it's cast, but he will reapply it if you're missing the debuff. Morose also targets the tank with the armor steal always and prioritizes targeting the healer with the garrote, but will of course target anyone else if the healer already has the debuff. After Morose dies, you want to invis past these guys and head down the stairs to Atuman's room. If you don't have shroud, or potions are on cooldown, you can pull this trash, it's not the end of the world, you will just obviously be overcount, but who really cares. This route is timeable even with 3 or 4 full group wipes while having low DPS, so you should not stress about the timer at all. Note that if you die at this point or at any point in the future, to run back from the spawn you go to the left, around the corner and then through this door, then carefully jump down through this balcony and you're back. Now in a two man's room, just pull packs one at a time or double up if your group has all stars in it. You have to kick terrifying stomp, it'll usually be the reason you wipe if it goes off, and the horses always charge at the tank, so the tank has to move out of it but you also have to look at where they're charging, since this will probably one-shot any DPS that gets hit by it. Also, it's very important that whenever you have a stable hand in the pull, have someone assigned to interrupt their heal. You can't stun it, as in my experience, it will just recast right after, so you save stuns for the horses and you have to kick the heal. After you clear the full room, pull and kill a two-man. I have a full guide for that in the cards, as well as below the like button. Just note that Blizzard has removed the dispel mechanic. Maybe it'll be back later on, but for now, it's no longer in the game. And once you kill a two min, you're going to the spider area over here. Now this trash does barely anything other than cones at the tank and a dot that drops a pool. The DPS and healer just need to make sure they're not either on the tank or standing in a green puddle. You'll want to pull everything in this first room as you see me do here, run through the webs to spawn the mini spiders and make sure to get the dreadlord as well as this patrolling purple thing. Then the next pull is through the left door and consists of a purple patrolling dude again and run through all the mini spiders but just in this room. Then pull them by the arch here and you should be able to kite them into the arch if you need to. Now this trash is only scary for the tank and it's very AFK for everyone else, so the DPS should be able to just mindlessly blast through it in no time. After this, you run up to the ramp that's behind you and straight line to Maiden. This hallway has been significantly nerfed so you can pull as large as you want, just the usual interrupts and dispels. Note that the Dreadlord Sleep Puddles do spawn under the carpet so they're practically invisible, and before you pull Maiden, get the two Dreadlords that are next to each other in this room for free stats. Then simply pull and kill Maiden. I have a very short video going over that also in the cards and the description but it's a fight with literally two mechanics, so it shouldn't be an issue. There are a few tricks and cheeses I do mention in the other video though. But that about does it for the lower Karazhan route. Honestly, I think this route makes lower very easy and much more fun, since there's a lot more large pulls with no mechanics like the spider room and the dining room. And if your group's DPS is up to par, this route will very easily two or three chest a dungeon, but at the very least it almost guarantees the key is timed even with lots of deaths and group wipes. So let me know if you'll be using this route and let me know if there's any other neat tricks in Lower Kara that are doable in Pugs. That's all for now though. Later!